Hello everyone, you're watching Physio Classroom channel and in this video of the hip joint mobilization series, we are going to learn how to perform the 8 stage mobilization technique for the hip joint. A physiotherapist can utilize the 8 stage mobilization technique, especially in conditions in which we have severe limitations in the hip joint ranges. The technique is helpful in improving the three dimensional mobility of the hip joint and I sincerely recommend especially that the physiotherapy students must watch our Spencer's technique for the shoulder joint which was a seven stage mobilization technique before watching this video. So let's get started with the practical demonstration of all eight stages. So to perform the eight stage mobilization technique, which is also known as the Spencer's technique for the hip joint, the therapist is first going to make the patient lie down in the supine lying position. And the therapist is going to stand on the side that needs to be treated. So we will be demonstrating the technique for the right side hip joint. The first stage of the Spencer's technique is intended to improve the hip joint flexion ranges. And for this, we are first going to bend the hip and knee to the available range of hip flexion. And now the contact points for both the hands are going to be such that we have firm grip for moving the hip into flexion. So my left hand is going to come and is going to grab the proximal aspect of the right knee joint and the left hand is going to come and be placed upon the distal aspect of the right knee joint and in this manner I have a firm grip by which I can actually mobilize and take the hip into the newer ranges of flexion. So after the hip joint has been taken into the available range of motion, the first thing that the therapist is going to do is perform oscillatory gliding for the hip joint and the intention here is to every time trying to cross the barrier and improve the hip flexion ranges. This oscillatory gliding needs to be performed for about half a minute. So after the oscillatory glides have been performed for about half a minute, the therapist is next going to utilize the muscle energy activation to gain further ranges of hip flexion. Now for this, the therapist is going to remove the contact of the left hand and then is going to ask the patient, push your knee into my hand and try to move your hip in the downward direction. Now the therapist is going to match the resistance of the patient and very little motion will be allowed to be produced. So push into my hand, 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 1008 and relax. Now again the contraction needs to be maintained for about 5 to 8 seconds and as soon as the patient relaxes, I have mentioned in my previous videos, it is always better to take the joint into new ranges by actively contracting the hip flexor muscles rather than taking the joint passively by the therapist. So as the patient relaxes, I again bring my left hand back and then remove my right hand and then ask the patient, okay now pull up and move your hip up, pull up and move your hip up, pull up and move your hip up and then the same technique needs to be reapplied in the newer range. It is advisable that a therapist should keep on performing the contract relax technique to improve the hip flexion ranges until no further improvement is taking place. So now let's move on to the second stage of the Spencer's technique. The second stage of the Spencer's technique is intended to gain the hip extension ranges. For this, the therapist makes the patient lie at the edge of the couch and the affected side hip joint is made to descend down in the available range towards the floor. So to perform the mobilization to improve the hip extension, the therapist is going to stand in this manner facing in the corded direction. Now the right hand of the therapist is going to be placed over the distal thigh whereas the left hand is going to be placed over the contralateral ASIS to stabilize the pelvis. Now again from here at the end range of restriction the therapist is first going to apply the oscillatory gliding the intention being 
to break the adhesions and take the joint into the newer ranges of available extension movement. After performing this oscillatory gliding for about half a minute, again the therapist is going to utilize the muscle energy activation to gain further ranges in the hip extension. Now from here the therapist is going to give command to the patient, I want you to pull your knee up against my hand. Pull up 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 1008 and relax. Now as the patient relaxes it is interesting to note that the position is such that the gravity itself is going to take the hip joint into the newer ranges of extension. But still it is advisable that the therapist should change the hold of the right hand and then again ask the pa patient to actually push my hand down and take your hip down. Push my hand down, take your hip down. Very nice. Now active pushing by the patient against the therapist hand actually ensures that the hip extensor muscles are activated in the newer ranges of hip extension and so the newer improved ranges are maintained. The stage 3 and 4 of the Spencer's technique involves mobilizing the hip with the circumduction mobilization technique in short lever and long lever respectively. Again, the intention is to improve the three-dimensional mobility of the hip joint. To perform the stage 3 circumduction mobilization, the therapist is going to bend the knee and flex the hip to the available range of hip flexion movement. Once the barrier is met, the therapist is going to place the right hand over the right knee joint in this manner. So the heel of the hand is covering the tibial tuberosity whereas the fingers are overlapping the knee joint. The left hand is going to support the proximal lateral portion of the right thigh. Now from here the therapist is going to give light compression to the hip joint and then is going to take the hip into the circumduction movement in small arcs. Now once the patient is comfortable with the technique, the therapist is gradually going to increase the arc of the circumduction mobilization, thereby gaining more and more abduction external rotation ranges and adduction internal rotation ranges. Perform the circumduction mobilization in this manner that is in the clockwise direction for about half a minute and this should be followed by the anti-clockwise circumduction mobilization again involving the abduction external rotation ranges and adduction internal rotation ranges. To perform the stage 4 mobilization the therapist again takes the patient's lower limb back to the starting position and now the therapist is going to stand at the leg end of the treatment table. Now the therapist now stands in the step standing position and grabs the patient's ankle and lower leg with both hands and now shifts the body weight backwards and this actually creates a distraction force to the right hip joint. Again the hip joint is taken into the small arcs of circumduction movement. So as you can see here, I am using my whole body to produce this circumduction mobilization. The student should note that we should not use our hands as it is going to consume more energy and it will be more stressful. So utilize your body weight, keep the weight on your back leg and then keep bending and straightening your knees to perform this mobilization in the clockwise direction for 30 seconds and then in the anti-clockwise direction for 30 seconds. Again the intention is to increase the arc or the range of motion in all the three directions. Stage 5 of the Spencer's technique for the hip joint involves improving the hip internal rotation range of motion. For this the therapist is going to flex the hip and knee and then the foot of the patient is going to be taken outwards towards the edge of the treatment couch and then the knee is going to be taken into the adduction position. Taking the hip inwards in this manner involves the hip internal rotation movement. Now once the end range of restriction for the hip internal rotation is met, again the therapist is going to utilize the oscillatory gliding technique and it is going to be performed for about half a minute. Again the intention is to break adhesions and take the hip into the new ranges of hip internal rotation. After half a minute the therapist is going to use the second technique which is the muscle energy activation. So this time what I am going to do is I am going to only 
make contact with the heel of my hand to the outer part of the knee joint and I am going to ask the patient, I want you to push into my hand and take your knee towards me. Push 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 1008 and relax and relax and as the patient relaxes, I am going to shift my contact of the hand towards the middle side and now I want you to push my hand down and take your knee down. Push, 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 push and we have to gain the newer range by active contraction of the patient. Now again this technique is going to be repeated for about 5 to 7 times or until we are not gaining further improvement in the hip internal rotation range. The stage 6 of the Spencer's technique is intended to improve the hip joint external rotation ranges. For this again the patient hip and knee are going to be flexed and then the therapist is going to take the knee in the outward direction. For both the techniques to improve the internal as well as the external rotation, the left hand is going to stabilize the ASIS. And now after the hip joint is taken into the end range of external rotation restriction, again the same oscillatory gliding technique is applied for half a minute followed by muscle energy activation. So this time I want you to pull into my hand and take your knee inwards okay so let's start pull into my hand 1001 1002 1003 1004 1005 1006 1007 1008 and relax 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 i change the contact of my right hand and now push into my hand and take your knee down push 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 and when the newer range is met again we have to repeat the technique until no further improvement is taking place. Stage 7 and 8 of the Spencer's technique is intended to improve the hip abduction and adduction ranges respectively. For the stage 7 mobilization, the therapist is going to stand facing in the cephalid direction. The heel of the left hand is going to stabilize the ipsilateral ASIS and the right hand is going to hold the distal medial portion of the right leg. The hip is then going to be taken into the available range of abduction and I hope by now we are very clear what we have to do next. Now from here the therapist is going to perform the oscillatory gliding trying to cross the barrier, break the adhesions and gain newer ranges of hip abduction. After the hip oscillatory gliding has been performed for about half a minute, the therapist is going to switch to the next technique which is the muscle energy activation. So this time I want you to push into my hand and take your hip inwards. Okay. So when I say push, take your hip in. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 1008 and relax. And as the patient relaxes, I am going to loosen the contact of my right hand on the medial side while my fingers of the right hand still having firm grip on the lateral side of the leg. Now this gives the stimulus to the patient where to apply the effort. Now I want you to push into my hand and take your hip out, 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 very nice, very nice, very nice, very nice and relax. Again repeat this contract relax or the muscle energy activation technique until no further improvement is taking place. To perform the eighth and the final stage of the Spencer technique, the therapist is first going to clear off the other side leg of the treatment couch. This will provide us the ample space to perform the adduction mobilization for the right sided hip joint. So again the heel of the left hand is going to stabilize the ipsilateral ASIS and the right hand is going to cup the distal lower portion of the patient's right leg just proximal to the ankle joint. And now the hip is going to be taken into the available range of adduction. Once the end range of restriction is met, the therapist is going to utilize the oscillatory gliding technique. This will be performed for about half a minute followed by the muscle energy activation. So this time I am going to loosen my finger grip and I am going to ask the patient, okay, now push into my hand and take your hip out. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007 and relax. And now again push into my hand and take your hip in, 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 in. Very nice. Again, we have to repeat this technique until no further improvement in the hip adduction range 
is taking place. So this was all about the practical demonstration of the eight stage mobilization technique for the hip joint. I sincerely hope that the information shared in this video is going to be helpful for you all. And before concluding this video, I would like to share very important treatment tip, especially with the physiotherapy students and young practitioners. Now definitely after applying the Spencer's technique, we are going to gain newer ranges in all the three dimensions. That is, we are going to have some improved ranges in flexion, extension, abduction, adduction and rotation. We have to ensure that the hip joint is exercised with the combination of isotonic technique in all the improved ranges. This is going to improve the motor control of the patient. The patient is going to have good muscle strength to help maintain the improved range of motion. And then only we should conclude our therapy session. So see you all in our next video. Till then, keep learning, keep, keep sharing learning. and stay connected.